I focus in on the wire transfer that General Mahmoud Ahmed wired to Muhammad Atta right before 9-11. That's pretty crucial because General Mahmoud Ahmed was actually meeting with key Washington, D.C. insiders, Senator Bob Graham, Porter Goss, the future director of CIA, on the morning of 9-11. And he has a relationship not only with the CIA, but with Dick Armitage at State Department, Mark Grossman at State Department. Are you, are you aware of the reports at the time that ISI chief was in Washington on September 11th and on September 10th, $100,000 was wired from Pakistan to these groups here in this area? And why he was here, was meeting with you or anybody in the administration? Um, I have not seen that report and he was certainly not meeting with me. Yes? In the White House transcript of this exchange, which is delivered to the press, the information about the ISI is censored. Bob Graham and Porter Goss will later co-head a joint inquiry which publicly claims that the Bush administration received absolutely no intelligence that could have prevented the attacks. The meeting begins at 8 a.m. over breakfast at the Capitol building and lasts through Flight 175's impact with the South Tower. During his visit, which began on September 4th, Ahmed would also meet with the present CIA director, George Tenet. A month later, after reports of the transfer between himself and Atta, Mahmoud Ahmed retires from the ISI. The 9-11 Commission report will later conclude that they saw no evidence that any foreign government or foreign government official supplied any funding. The commission decided not only to omit the information, but to deny it entirely. On 172, page 172 of your report, the 911 report, you state, quote, the U.S. government has not been able to determine the origin of the money used in the 911 attacks. Ultimately, the question is of little practical significance, end quote. How can you state that the question of who bankrolled the deaths of 3,000 American people on September 11th is, quote, of little practical significance? Because it costs so little money. That's the awful thing. It costs less than $500,000. That's why it was so hard to trace. We were able to find pieces of the, of the $500,000, but came in very small pieces. And you said earlier $500,000 to do the 9-11 operation. Well, we know that 100000 was wired to Muhammad Atta directly from the head of Pakistani ISI. Well, I'm not aware of $100,000 in Muhammad Atta, but the, uh, Pakistan, I think, is the most dangerous country in the world. Why was there such a vested interest in covering up the transaction between the ISI and Muhammad Atta? And let's talk about that wire transfer, because uh, Governor Kane had no basis for denial, because the FBI and the Wall Street Journal confirmed the General Mahmoud Ahmed wire transfer I'm talking about. But the 9-11 Commission deliberately said that funding is not important and assigning blame is not important to them, but it is to us. As if their funding was not suspicious enough, a number of hijackers reportedly trained at U.S. military bases. As hard as this is to believe that two of the alleged terrorists involved in what happened on Tuesday may have attended schools run by the U.S. military, now, this is according to a senior defense official. Ahmed Al-Nami, Ahmed Al-Gandhi, and Saeed Al-Gandhi listed their address on both driver's licenses and car registrations as the Naval Air Station in Pensacola, Florida. Mohammed Atta reportedly graduated from the U.S. International Office School at Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. In response to a Freedom of Information Act, Captain Jason Taylor confirmed that a Muhammad Atta trained there between 1998 and 1999, but did not verify if it was the same person. Abdulaziz Alamari attended Brooks Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. Saeed Al-Gandhi and others attended the Defense Language Institute in Monterey, California, as confirmed by Lieutenant Colonel Steve Butler, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. American media ceases investigation when the Air Force says, we are probably not talking about the same people. Two of the hijackers, Nawaf Al-Hazmi and Khalid Al-Madar, rented an apartment from and lived with an FBI informant. Curiously, a number of them were reported to still be alive after the attack. Finally, 
We were led to believe that the alleged hijackers were fundamentalist Muslims spending their final days preparing for paradise. Yet, in the week before the attacks, a number of them would drink, visit strip clubs, and solicit prostitutes. By all accounts, Ada and his cousin kept to themselves, except for last Thursday, at this bar in Hollywood, Florida. It's believed both men came in, drank heavily, and then refused to pay the bill. And the guy got, like, very, very offended, and he, he said to me, he said, Oh, I can pay my bill. I'm, a, I'm an airline pilot. And I was like, okay. Mahed Maked is spotted several times at a porn shop. Hamza Al-Gandhi ordered a porno in his hotel on September 10th. The mayor of Patterson, New Jersey, states that they are spotted more at go-go clubs than at mosques. Regardless of their actions, some of the hijackers' presence was known as early as 2000. What did we know? When did we know it? That's what some congressmen are asking now, or, and asking quite loudly. Did we know the year before 9-11 that one of the hijackers was a terrorist threat? Army Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer has gone public with his charge that Able Danger, a military intelligence project he worked with in 2000, identified Mohammed Atta, even pulled up his picture, along with three other 9-11 hijackers, as possible Al-Qaeda members. We found the identities of four of the 9-11 hijackers prior to 9-11. But he says beginning in September 2000, three meetings he set up with the FBI were each canceled by military lawyers. Schaefer also says he remembers telling then 9-11 commission staff at a meeting in Afghanistan about Atta and what the intelligence unit found back in 2000. And he was surprised that it did not show up in the commission's report. I'm told confidently uh, by the person who did move the material over that the 9-11 Commission received two briefcase size containers of documents. I can tell you for a fact that would not be one one-twentieth of the information that, that Able Danger consisted of during the time we spent. A 9-11 Commission spokesman said nothing they got from the Pentagon in early 2004 backed up Schaefer's claim, quote, none of the documents turned over to the Commission mentioned Mohammed Atta or any of the other future hijackers. Where is it? Where's the beef? Where's the substance? Where is this mysterious chart that purportedly says that Otta was connected in some real way to these other hijackers. We'd love to see it. The company responsible for the chart, Orion Scientific Systems, would claim that only two charts were produced and that Otta was not present on either one. Throw them all out, John. These are all the charts. Spread them out. These are all Orion produced charts. These charts were all done by the data mining efforts. So the Orion Corporation lied to the Senate Judiciary Committee staff all data mining efforts, and yet the company said to the Senate Judiciary staff, we don't have any of those charts, they're not ours. Well, here they are, and their logos are on each one of them. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, at least two of the five people that were going to appear today were threatened with removal of their security clearances if they continue to talk about this. This is going back... Are you back. at liberty to identify who those two are? Uh, I will to you. I'd rather do it privately since the Defense Department has chosen not to allow anyone to testify, but I will provide that information to the committee. For the life of me, I don't understand why, uh, as I understand it, I stand corrected if I'm wrong, but I understand the witnesses we assumed we were going to get to hear from, from the Defense department have been pulled. They may be or may not be in the room, but have been instructed that they cannot testify. Um, I think that's a big mistake. This is actually a chart of Al-Qaeda and the various cells around the world. Much of this data, most of it was obtained prior to 9-11 by the work of Able Danger. Uh, as you see, there is an actual photograph what of Muhammad does that, What does that depict generally? It depicts the uh, organizational and activity associations of Al-Qaeda operatives that were involved in 9-11 and related events. And at the time, if the commission had looked into this in early 2004, the charts that had Mohammed Atta on it still existed. There was a chart in Mr. Smith's office. There was the chart that still should have been in the Defense Intelligence Agency because it wasn't destroyed uh, within Lieutenant Colonel Schaefer's files until the spring of 2004. The same with the chart that Mr. Smith had. Uh, our support to Able Danger became severely restricted and ultimately shut down due to intelligence oversight concerns. I was supported vigorously by both the LIWA and the INSCOM chain of commands uh, and we actively worked to overcome this shutdown for the next several months. In the midst of this shutdown, I along with one of my analysts, Chief, uh, Chief Warrant Officer 3 Terry Stevens, 
Cubans were forced to destroy all data, charts, and other analytical products that we had not already passed on to SOCOM related to able danger. Another former DOD official will testify today that he was ordered to destroy up to 2.5 terabytes of data. Now, I don't know what a terabyte of data is, so we contacted the Library of Congress. It's equal to one-fourth of all the entire written collection that the Library of Congress maintains. Uh, are you in a position to uh, evaluate the credibility of uh, Captain Philpott, Colonel Schaefer, uh, Mr. Westfall, Mr. Prosser, Mr. J.D. Smith, as to their uh, credibility when they say they saw Muhammad Atta on a chart? Uh, yes, sir. I believe them uh, ex implicitly. Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, who was the first member of Able Danger to go public, has now been told in writing by the Defense Intelligence Agency that he can't speak to members of Congress or their staff without prior approval. And now a security clearance, which allowed him to deal with classified information, has been pulled. The congressman says Schaefer has been gagged, punished, for speaking up. The official response to Able Danger began in September 2005 with a letter from 9-11 Commissioner Slade Gordon to Senator Arlen Specter. Gordon concludes by saying that since Condoleezza Rice, President Bush, and the White House deny that Able Danger identified the 9-11 hijackers, it never happened. A six-month investigation by the Senate Intelligence Committee concluded in December 2006 that Able Danger did not identify Mohammed Atta or any other 9-11 hijacker. Can we be certain that the hijackers were radical Muslims on a suicide mission? Or is there a possibility that they were trained, funded, and protected in our own country? Major Deskins? Yes, ma'am, Sergeant Lorda. Yes, Sergeant I'm just letting you know for information we're having an exercise, SF exercise. We're having a calm out. Okay. Guys. Happy, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Between September 2000 and June 2001, the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, would scramble fighter jets to intercept errant aircraft 67 times. Interceptions are routine and usually occur within 10 minutes of a sign of trouble, such as permanently losing radio contact and transponder signal or flying off course. On the morning of September 11th, according to official accounts, four commercial airliners would be off course and out of communication, and not one of them would be intercepted. How is